WWF fans by the thousands turned out for America's birthday on board the USS Intrepid. It was Yokozuna versus the USMA. All the competitive professional athletes attempting to slam Yokozuna and win the brand new Silverado Chevrolet pickup truck. America's pride was at stake. Ladies the and WWF gentlemen, champion, all WWF 550 champion, pounds of him, Yoko made his way to ringside Yuna. in an attempt to celebrate his winning of the WWF title, in an attempt to embarrass and humiliate all the professional American athletic competitors. As you can see here, Lee Rusan, ex-New York Giant football player, played in two Super Bowls as a running back. My advice to you, pal, is to keep running and get some singing lessons. Now, Bob Backlund, almost six years WWF champion and former NCAA collegiate star. Couldn't do it. They all had a shot. Peter Taglianetti from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Going for it, and he had a good grip, but not quite enough. But a gallant effort. You know something there, Scott Burrell, he was just drafted by the Charlotte Hornets last Wednesday. The smartest athlete of them all. He knew he couldn't do it. He knew no one could do it. He hit the back door. He took a lock and decided no way, but here's a man who stepped forward. Look at the guts of this guy, Scott Steiner, a superior athlete and one half of the World Wrestling Federation oh. Tag Team Champions. And he couldn't do it for the red, white, and blue, but he's a superstar. Yeah, he is. A gallant effort on the part of Scott, Scott Steiner. Steiner. And then from there, could you believe this? A timeout called by Mr. Fuji and Yokozuna. It was time hey, Fuji, to fuel up. Look at this. Fuji I big. couldn't believe it. Chopsticks in hand, eating a great big bowl of rice. And he weighed in at 568. That's unbelievable. 568 pounds. And then from there, Tatanka, the undefeated Native American, hits the ring. He's got a plan. He's trying to chop him. He's trying to soften him up. Two chops. He's coming off with the third chop. Thinks he's got him. Goes to the top rope. One, two, three. He's up there. He thinks he's going to soften him up. And then he's going to be able to slam him with ease. But yes. watch this. He and there he goes. Oh. Cannot do it. And watch this. this. Oh, my goodness. A devastating maneuver. Off the rope. Down. It's safe to say Tokyo won. The Indians, nothing. Let's hear it for Bill Fredrick, ladies and gentlemen. Bill Fredrick, four up. years pro bowler, and look at this, he got him up, he almost did it. Oh. Bill Fredrick, and the Lions are proud of Bill Fredrick looking forward to his participation this year. Check <laughs> out this big, strong guy from Kona, Hawaii. He shocked the whole world almost by getting this guy, Yokozuna, up further than anybody did to this point. Unbelievable, the 300 pounder crush had the support of the capacity crowd. Last week he uh, slammed Bastion Booger too, so he was on a roll. And then the stare down. Crush. Who's got the height advantage? Having the height advantage, about that. yes. And with leverage, the man from the 50th state, the original Hawaiian crush. The punch, yes, the crush, look at him, he was pumped, he was ready, and there he goes. No, no. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Let's do it for America. And there was one man left. Randy Macho, Macho Man, man Savage. Randy Savage. Two-time WWF champion. If there's anybody at that ring, if there's anybody in this WWF that has more determination and more guts that would want to slam him more than anybody, that's the man right there, the Macho Man. Randy Savage, the Macho Man, had tremendous support from the capacity crowd. And look at this, ready to go. Come on, Savage, try. Try, lift him. He can't do it, it can't be done. I guess at this time, it appeared as though so Yokozuna, in fact, had humiliated America. He had embarrassed WWF all of the professional Yoko athletes Zuna. who attempted to slam him on board the USS Intrepid, the last of which was the Macho Man Randy Savage, who wanted to have one have more go. A round of applause for all the competitors. A round today. of applause for the competitors, asked for by Todd Pettengill, the host, and then from there, something happened on board the Intrepid. Something happened on America's birthday. One more competitor would arrive. 
chartering a helicopter. One more competitor, One more competitor would step forward and attempt to save what had been indeed an embarrassment for America. As Yokozuna and Mr. Fuji looked on wondering just who had the gall, who had the audacity at the very last moment to step forward. Fans couldn't believe their eyes as they said, no, could it be? Yes, it was Lex Luger. Lex Luger, who had always been proud of himself. We found out on that day he was proud of America as well. And with a look of determination in his eyes, he made his way to the ring, shoving Bobby Heenan aside, shoving anyone aside who would stand in his way. He was America's last hope, the last chance of America for someone to step forward. Or would Luger be embarrassed like all of the other competitors as the capacity crowd began to chant, Lex, Lex, you know he could feel their spirit. He could feel the power of the thousands of fans who had turned out on America's Please birthday. The contest is over, and you're too late. But was it too late? Ever since King of the Ring, I had an itch under my skin, and it became a rash. What you are is a cancer, and the World Wrestling Federation, everybody wants to know, wait a second, everybody wants to know what's wrong with America. There's nothing wrong with America. What's wrong with America is blood-sucking leeches like you and overstuffed sushi eating, rice chopping wrestler you call a champion. He's a disgrace to the World Wrestling Federation. The only thing wrong with America is you and we're gonna clean house right here, right now. Mr. Fuji spat on Lex Luger as if he was spitting on America. And with that, Mr. Fuji went for the ride he'll never forget. And Lex Luger began to prepare. Prepare, yes, for the slam. Prepare for the attempt. And the look of intensity in his eye told the whole story. And then from there it happened, the 550-pounder charge. Luger ducking out of the way, nailing Yokozuna with a six-inch steel plate in the forearm, and from there, yes, yes, it was unbelievable. Lex Luger had done it. Lex Luger had accomplished the impossible. He slammed the 550-pound WWF champion down to the mat, down to the deck of the USS Intrepid. And yes, this was what it's all about. America and Lex Luger would not be denied the celebration of her birthday. Thousands of fans on board the USS Intrepid saluting the great country we live in and saluting one of the great competitors who stepped forward to be counted on July 4th Sunday, America's birthday. And a big man went down on July 4th, 